Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the 15th in a series of video tutorials on how to create a Super Mario game in Unity 5. So this episode we're going to do a couple of things, we're going to modify our death script and we're going to also apply it to our death mushroom here. Uh, we'll add a couple of things to the scene as well and we'll start preparing to end this level um, so we can move on to, uh, let's say, an interior level. So firstly what we'll do is we need to go into our death trigger object and then into the level 01 death. And in there, what we'll do is we'll add a couple of uh, lines of code which allow us to stop our player from moving out of the playable area when we die. So when I open uh, Mono Develop here, I'm going to quickly uh, flip back to Unity just to show you what we're, what's going on and how we're going to avoid it completely. So, in fact, we'll play that now while we're waiting for Mono Develop to load. So, currently, currently when we play, what we get is we go all the way over here to where we want to go. We want to die. And when we do die, you can see that the camera still moves and it still goes a bit funny. So, we need to stop all that as soon as possible in this script. So as I say, the script we're going to be in is the level 01 death. And in here, what we're going to do is let's add um, a variable. So the variable we're going to add is going to be for the camera itself. Or rather, um, yeah, I, th I think we'll do it directly for the camera. We'll do it that way. So var, uh, let's just call it cam follow. We'll have that as game object. Now this is going to need to be in a specific place. So we're going to need to put it, I think, maybe just here, I think. So after the we've played the sound of our death, what we need to do is disable the camera follow script, which is in our camera. So currently, if you go to your main camera, you should have the script called camera follow, which is what we did uh, quite a while ago in this series. So we need to disable that script as soon as we die. So cam follow dot get component. And in brackets and quotes, we need to put that script name, which is camera follow or whatever you named your script as you put that in there. Um, quote again and close bracket and dot enabled equals false. So next thing we need to do, obviously semicolon at the end there. Next thing we're going to need to do is we need to disable the uh, character controller on the player. So let's add in another uh, variable. So it's going to be var the player, also a game object, and I'm going to put here the player dot get component bracket and quote, and I'm going to click on our third person controller, and it's going to be, um, which script should we disable? Let's see, let's make sure we've got everything right here, because we don't want to get this quite wrong. So we want third person, we'll go with, I tell you what, we'll disable both of them just to be sure. So we want third person user control as first one. Third person user control dot enabled equals false. And I'm going to copy that line of code, paste it underneath. And it's going to be third person character. So third person character in the quotes. And save. Let's head back to Unity. Just hope we don't get any errors. It's Unity thinking about it. Uh, I think we're all good there. Yep, that's fine. So let's go to our level 01 death object in the hierarchy is down here so death trigger zero one and um, we need to input our two new variables so we're going to be main camera drag and drop 
and third person controller drag and drop. Let's save our scene there and let's see how this pans out. We may need to modify our script a little bit more. We may uh, freeze everything too early, but we shall soon see. So over our pipe, over our mushroom and into the death. OK, that looks fine. So we've frozen everything instantly there. So no matter what happens, our level, our camera, everything freezes like it would in a Mario game. It doesn't drift away or anything silly like that. So another way we can actually die is obviously by, let's say, hit the mushroom guy here without actually stomping on him. So we need to add these death script, uh, sorry, <laughs> death script colliders to the mushroom himself. So let's just make sure we get the right one. So it's Mushroom Man 001. So we just need to add a couple of colliders just to the very bottom of him, either side. So we can do that by taking Death Trigger 001, duplicating, and then moving it onto the mushroom itself. So I think he was somewhere at the top. So yep, yeah, drag and drop onto there. Let's zero out that position. So it brings it there, and let's drag it into shape. So we need to reduce the scale to, let's say, 0 0.1 maybe, so as it's rather small. I'm going to turn on Mesh Renderer for now and turn the Mesh Renderer on the Mushroom Man as well, just so we can see where we're dragging this to. So the Death Trigger, just there. Just need to drag it to about there. And we need to shrink it once again on the Z or Z axis. So we'll put that as 1. And on the Y axis, we'll do that as 0 0.5 maybe. I think 5 should do it. So we can drag and drop that to about there. And Control D and drag it just to the end there. So now our Mushroom Man has two Death Colliders just poking out from the side of it. So if we jump on it, it will kill the mushroom. If we uh, walk into it, it should kill us. It may need a little bit of working, but hopefully we should be able to play this now and the mushroom should kill us. So let's give that a go. So let's go all the way over here, jump over and run into our mushroom. So Needs a little bit more modification on that. So firstly, what I'm going to do is, if you remember, we have some objects which kind of encloses into the level. I can't remember what we called them. Let me see. Where was it down here? Um, mm -mm. I can't actually remember what we called them. Did we call it? Let's have a quick look. Pipe Collider, Dark Ground. We should really put these into um, folders. OK, there we are, the barriers. So that's what we need to change. So I'm going to extend this barrier from 20 to 50, so it's a lot larger. Same with the inside barrier, from 20 to 50. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... Let me think. Well, I suppose ultimately you could add a quick little animation to um, the character and the death script to show what Mario would do in a Super Mario game. He would like fly off the edge and he would die. So you could do that if you want to. To save time, I'm just going to do a quick... Um, I'll just make him shrink real quick, just to kind of show what's going on and where you would put in your animation. So I'm going to put here the player um, dot transform dot local scale minus equals new um, oops sorry no vector three we'll need so I want to shrink him on the um, y axis maybe so I'll put this as 0 0.0 1.0 and 0 0.0 and we'll just assess how this should look. So our character itself is currently on the y-axis, um, let me see, so it's 0 0.8, how is this going to look? So I think we're going to need to change this from 
want to probably 0 0.7 for now and save and let's see how this pans out when we hit our mushroom man. So obviously it won't matter too much when we die because we'll be shrinking off screen anyway so it's it's all irrelevant it doesn't really matter about the death script when we fall off. Okay so that should do the trick. That's something simple. So you would put some kind of animation in there if you wanted to. You could also even put in there the um, a way of stopping the mushroom from moving if you wanted to, or turning off colliders. But I'll tell you what, let's turn off the collider on our third person controller as well. So we need to turn off the capsule collider. So we can copy that, paste it there. And instead of third person character, we put capsule collider and save. So now, once again, if, if you fall down there, it won't matter to turn off the capsule collider at all because it'll reset anyway when you restart the level. So as for this bit, it just means the mushroom can carry on moving so that it doesn't look a bit silly when we die. So our mushroom. There we go. In fact, another way you could do it is you could make him fall through the floor, I guess, if you wanted to. Um, so let's slash out that line and save. So we're not going to shrink ourselves. We should just kind of fall because we've turned the capsule collider off. So one last time on this one. Let's head over. And we should be able to... Yeah, that should do. Okay, so there's a few different ways that you could deal with uh, your character being hit by the mushroom. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple more things to this level and then prepare ourselves for the next tutorial, which will be, um, as I say, the interior. So I'm going to import a couple of textures, which is going to be the small block, tree bark, and the green tree. So straight into Unity. Now, you probably don't need me to show you too much of how to make a tree. It's it, it's something you could probably quickly do yourselves, to be honest. But I'm just going to quickly bring these blocks across to about there, I think. And just make a couple more just to extend the level. I'm not going to build it at a full level because I can leave that up to you guys to build the level how you would want it to be. You can build it as long as you want. You can build it as accurate to the original Super Mario game if you want to. So I'm just giving you all the different ways of creating a level. So I'm going to quickly create a tree over here in the background. So game object, 3D object, and let's go with cylinder. Let's bring it into position. So maybe about there. I'm going to shrink it on the um, x-axis to about 0 0.25, 0 0.25 on the z-axis. Let's bring that there to about there. And on that cylinder, I'm going to rename it and put tree 001. And within there, I'm going to input a capsule. Uh, let's increase the capsule to about five, if that's a bit too big. Maybe let's do four by four. And you probably guessed it by now. I'm just going to simply drag and drop these textures onto the uh, objects in there, nice and simple. So now we have some kind of tree going on there. But one thing to do with this tree, especially this um, foliage or rubbish foliage at the top, turn off the capsule collider. Because if you have the capsule collider on, your player may collide with it because it could be in his path, depending how close you are to the tree. So yeah, I'm going to duplicate that, just put couple down here just to give it a bit more colour to the game. Maybe like that. Put one right by the start maybe. About there. So let's quickly have a look at if we can get past these trees. We shouldn't have too much of a problem. Yeah, that's no problem at all. And we've died. Okay, no problem. So next thing, let's put some of these small blocks in. Now that it's real simple to do, um, 
you can probably turn off the tutorial at this point because I'm sure you know how to build these blocks up. Uh, I'm going to control D that ground block, drag it out, right click, rename, and have it just call send uh, block 001. As you know, that you normally get these style of blocks as you come to the end of the level. I'm going to do 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5. Drag and drop the small block texture onto there. And let me quickly check my snap settings. So I'm going to change it to 0 0.5 by 0, by 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. <clears throat> Drag it into position so it should be a about there, I would think. And let's quickly make some kind of steps at least. Real simple. There's there's no magic behind this. You can make this as accurate as you want. Let's do just a couple more. So obviously at this point you've realized that we are, or rather I am showing you how to get to the end of this level. So Next episode, I do want to go with the interior, i.e., for example, um, we'll deal with some fireballs, you know, the kind of spinning fireballs. We'll deal with the colour of different music and a couple of different things. Um, one last thing I'm going to do on this before we finish is I'm going to quickly explain about normal maps. Now, normal maps are a way of kind of giving a bit of bump to a uh, texture to make it look a little bit more 3D, depending on the light. So all these are send blocks. I'm just gonna quickly move into the middle, I think, to make them look a little bit better. So about there should do the trick. So to do a normal map, best way to do it is if you click your block, hold control, press D, the texture that would be, and over here on texture type, click on normal map. You may have to uh, click on create from grayscale. I, I would advise that. Bumpiness, I'm going to keep at 0 0.25, but you can have that figure as whatever you want. Play around with it and see what kind of effects you like best. Click on apply and it'll turn a kind of purpley looking color. And then on the material, you have that block on, which is this one, small block. Just drag and drop that normal map onto the normal map right there. Now, depending on your light in the game, you will notice uh, a bit of a difference on them. Not quite sure how it looks on our game at the moment, but I'm going to do it on these blocks as well, just to see how this looks. So, Control D on there, and change it to normal map, and apply, makes all grayscale is ticked. And I'm going to click on that, and I can do it here, and drag and drop onto normal map there. And hopefully you should see a difference in the blocks. They may look a bit different. Um, if we go to window lighting as well, you can change how it looks here. So changing how it, reducing that right down, you'll see the scene is then illuminated by whatever lighting you have in the scene. So you'll probably notice a difference with your normal maps at this point. And I guess you can probably do it to the background that we have as well, the clouds. Um, let's see how that looks. Control D. Change it to a normal map, apply, and then let's put that normal map onto there. Okay, so that looks a bit crazy. So this gives us a chance to play around with the normal map itself, especially the bumpiness. So let's reduce this bumpiness to 0 0.08 and press apply. And you'll notice a difference. So let's reduce it a little bit more. 0 0.0, let's say 4, and then click apply again. So you'll see that we are kind of getting a 3D effect on that background now, which could be something that you would want. You could also try clicking on smooth and see if that makes much of a difference how you would want it to look. So let's put this up a little bit and see how the smooth looks at 0 0.1. Still not great. So I'm going to keep it as 0 0.04, and I'll keep that as smooth as well. So you can do that to as many textures as you want. Let's do it to these blocks as well. Why not? We've done the rest. So normal map, apply, and then just apply that normal map to the block over here. 
and let's see. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with how that looks. You can fiddle around with it, change it as you need to. Uh, last thing, let's have a quick little look with the lighting. So I'm going to put shadow type and I'm going to put um, soft shadows. So we can have got a little bit of shadow going on in the scene. We can also rotate it. So you depend on where you want your shadows to be, how dark or bright you want your scene to be. You can do probably that with it. Rotate it a bit on the X and you can have many different ways of looking at the scene. So I'm going to have it about there, I think. May rotate on the X a little. Shouldn't matter too much. Let's change the color a little. Change it to maybe an orange color. And what you can also do is if you duplicate that and change it to a blue, a contrasting blue color, you can then fiddle around with the rotation and see what kind of, um, see how you can get it looking. So you can change how the scene looks just by rotating that. So we can have it, let's say, let's, have, let's just have it about there. So then let's play this game and see how it looks whilst we're playing. So you can see we're actually getting somewhere with this now. It looks. It looks a bit more modern than previously. So we can't make that jump. So I'm sure we can fix that for the next episode. You guys can fix it. It's all the same. Um, so yeah, until next episode, when we look at a couple more things in here, we'll put in the castle and we'll start building up our second level and we'll work on a transition uh, into our second level. So until then, thank you very much for watching.